He's offering to people who score high in authoritarianism just about everything that they would want. You know, we have, he suggests that we live in this chaotic world and we need to make America great again. In other words, that you know, the past is really better than the, the present and certainly the future that Democrats and even other Republicans talk about. So this is an important part of his appeal. And then think about the issues that he talks about. You know, if people who score high in authoritarianism are concerned about outsiders, well, he's going to build a wall. And if, you know, people um, uh, who score high in authoritarianism, they think sameness is a plus. And, but he's going to keep, you know, all the Muslims out of the country until we figure out what's going on. And if, you know, ISIS is a, a threat and a fear, he's going to go knock the hell out of them. Um, and he's going to kill the leader's parents and, and children and things along those lines. Um, you know, for people who, you know, find the world to be unsettling and chaotic and that other people can't be trusted, he's providing us exactly, or providing them exactly what they're looking for. I think one of the things that's really, you know, problematic is what it's doing to our political discourse right now. You know, the types of people who Trump has been appealing to, you know, the sort of um, you know, people who would find attractive building a wall that's, you know, a certain number of feet between here and Mexico and the types of people who, um, you know, would like to see um, all the uh, Muslims kept out of the country and the types of people who would like to see, you know, uh, the hell knocked out of ISIS and, and things along those lines. You know, you look at these rallies. I mean, there's violence that's, um, you know, taking place uh, at these types of things. The way that um, Marco Rubio and, and uh, Donald Trump are talking about hand size and you know things along these lines, it's about as dismaying a thing as um, I certainly have ever seen in my years uh, on this earth. And I really do think um, this is the logical outgrowth of this, you know, this is the logical outgrowth of this least common denominator type of politics, um, where the least common denominator is being appealed to by Trump. Um, George Wallace's candidacy in 1968, you know, sort of a, a racist, um, you know, candidacy, but also with many of the same notes here about um, otherness in general, not just African Americans, and you know how um, we were going to deal with Vietnam and the protesters and the social unrest that was taking place then. And I think we could go back to the 1950s and think about. Um, the McCarthy uh, period, the Red Scare. Um, this would be another period um, where, you know, these concerns about our safety in the world caused um, people to be able to, you know, kind of be demagogues um, to take advantage of that um, fear. And then if you go back to Nazi Germany, you know, I'm no expert on, you know, Nazi Germany, but one thing that I think is, you know, interesting and useful to think about is a lot of people, you know, whether it was in electing, um, you know, Hitler in the first place, but certainly in the decade that followed in terms of following him, uh, you know, it's not like everybody in Germany was a high-scoring authoritarian, you know. I'm sure that they had a, you know, some people who were high, some people who were low, and some people who were in the middle. But when people are under a lot of stress, feel, feeling a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger, um, everybody is susceptible to those types of appeals. It's not like it's just some fringe group. Right now it feels like some fringe group. Um, but when times are tough, when things are um, really frightening, everybody is, you know, a possible follower. The thing that just kills me about this, when you, when you put this into historical um, perspective, you know, the world has been a much scarier place on many different occasions in American history than it is these days. And what I'm completely puzzled by is why now uh, of all times where, you know, the U.S. truly is the hegemonic power in the world. And, you know, of course there was an economic downturn, um, but, you know, for the last, you know, six or so years, we've been doing much better um, than, you know, at the depths of it.